Super History Brothers Brawl. I think I'm finally gonna win. Haha, not yet. Joseph's almost ready to use his guillotine power. Aw, oh, you win every time. Let's do something else. How about we read a book? <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. What do you have? I found one. I've never read this story before. It's called Frederick and Gaston. Maybe we'll learn something about the characters in Super History Brothers Brawl. Alright, let's see what this book's all about. The year was 1791. Frederick and Gaston still don't know each other. Frederick was just 16 years old and he was a farmer for most of his early life. He was a member of the Third Estate and had recently started attending the Jacobin meetings. He was one of the up-and-coming notable leaders of the Jacobin organization. At this time, their views were very moderate. Over time, however, the Jacobins became more radical. On the other hand, Gaston was 18 years old, and he was a part of the Second Estate. His father was a part of the clergy, and his family lived in luxury. They lived in a huge house, they had expensive furniture, fancy clothing, and also Gaston was able to receive a great education and was preparing for college. Gaston has to bring food to a big party at the church, while Frederick is looking for ingredients for stew for his club. Hello there. I seem to be at a loss for knowing how to pick ripe vegetables. My father asked me to get vegetables to cook at tonight's gathering, and I don't want to make a mess of things. It looks like you're doing well at finding ripe vegetables. Can you possibly give me some pointers? Uh, sure. What ingredients are you looking for, and what do you intend to make? I'm looking for corn, rice, and potatoes. Well, how many people are you cooking for? About 30 to 40 people. That's funny. There's an event over at the Jacobin Club, and that's about the same amount of people I'm buying for. I'm gonna be making a stew. Two days later, Frederick and Gaston bump into each other at a market. Again. Hi Frederick, how did your dinner turn out? Well, the, st well, the stew turned out well. Although everyone was so preoccupied with the business at hand, I didn't have to work so hard. What kind of group is this? We are called the Jacobins. We are an organization who believes in equality for all, no matter what estate you are in. It just seems like the rich get richer and live in their bubble, while the hard-working class get the short end of the stick all the time. This country is going to hell! I understand people wanting to hold on to what they have, but taking care of the hungry and poor is also very important for a balanced society. Well, why don't you come to our next meeting in two weeks? I think your views would be a welcome addition to our task toward equality. Gaston agreed to attend the meeting. However, Gaston is still not positive whether or not he actually wants to go. Gaston infers that Frederick's statement about the rich getting richer, that they are not going to like him. Welcome everyone to our monthly meeting. It appears we have some new guests. I would like to introduce my new friend Gaston to our meeting. He has many ideas on how to start sharing a little more of their wealth among the hard-working people. Well, welcome. I'll tell you some basic information on our group. My name is Maximilian Robespierre, and I am the new founder of the Jacobin Club. Our old leaders left the group after many members had left. I, being one of the few remaining members, decided to take over the group with the others remaining. Now we're building it back up and getting new members to try and raise awareness on our cause. Let's get on with today's business. Nobody in here should be a member of the National Assembly. I am currently working on a letter to send to them about how war could cause a dictatorship like the Cromwells. Robespierre began reading his letter to them, taking suggestions from the audience as he went along. If they are Caesars or Cromwells, they seize power for themselves. If they are spineless courtiers, uninterested in doing good, yet dangerous when they seek to do harm, they go back to lay their power at their master's feet and help them resume arbitrary power on condition that they become chief servants. This ended up becoming one of his most famous lines. He later read his speech to the National Assembly. Although Gaston learned from this meeting, he still didn't feel right about going to it and did not agree with everything Rose Pierre said. 
Frederick and Gaston continued to attend the meetings. Gaston tried to keep an open mind throughout them. He didn't mention that his father was a member of the clergy and didn't wear anything fancy that would stand out to the group. The church has too much power. They are the largest landowners, pay no taxes, yet they still receive a tenth of our income. We can barely afford food as it is. They are in charge of education and have all of our records. They have way too much power and we need to find a way to weaken them. Statements like this made Gaston very worried about his own family. We have to come up with tactics to weaken the church. We have waited too long. Also, the National Assembly wants to start a war with Austria. We need to figure out how to stop this, as the military forces might stop our club. A revolutionary war must be waged to free subjects enslaved from unjust tyranny, not for the traditional reasons of defending dynasties and expanding frontiers. Robespierre soon found himself to be a military leader. He argued that winning battles wasn't very important. Frederick and Gaston continued to be friends, despite their different opinions. After one meeting, they argued about the clergy's power. Being the single largest landowner and collecting 10% tax on people's hard-earned income is just not right. Why should the church be exempt from paying taxes at all? This is only fueling the fire of an already bad situation. I feel the Jacobins are becoming what they hated. The group is beginning to carry out acts of terror to get what they want and will cause their own demise. I no longer want to be associated with this group and will denounce my association with this organization. Frederick and Gaston parted ways and Gaston didn't show up to the next meeting. After going to the meetings for almost a year, Gaston decided that he was done with the Jacobins. Meanwhile, the war had started with France and Austria and the Jacobins' views became more radical. Robespierre decided that the Jacobins should focus their attacks on the Catholic Church. Even though Gaston decides not to go to the next meeting, Frederick still does. His goal is to anger Robespierre even more to attack the Catholic Church. Where's your friend? He betrayed us and joined the side of the Catholic Church. What? He's gonna tell him all of our plans! We need to act fast now! Yo, this part is amazing! <laughs> okay, Danny. Gaston decides to finally tell his father, Christian, about the Jacobins, right by a big party at the church. Son, we have a small gathering of 50 for this evening's dinner. It is made up of King Louis' court and other great nobles. Father, do you know about the Jacobins? Oh, Sean, yes, I do. They are a very cruel group, with a leader that is against the church and what we believe in. Well, I actually met someone from their group by the name of Frederick, and he told me to go to their meetings. I learned that they're planning to attack us. What? What, what, what were you thinking? Why, why, why you didn't tell? Ah! 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 Robespierre and his army storm the church. They kill Christian, Gaston, and many others. The remaining people are arrested and later killed. They try to eliminate everything that has to do with Christianity. They take down crosses and bells, and they even convert the Notre Dame Cathedral into a temple of reason. People celebrated the revolution, but it did not last long. Fifty days later, the guillotine came into use, and under it were the heads of King Louis the Sixteenth, Marie Antoinette, and Robespierre. Wow, that story was great. Huh, I guess we know why the guillotine move in the game is so good. It was able to take out the king, the queen, and Robespierre. I think next game I'm going to choose Robespierre. The guillotine was the last obstacle in his way, so I think I'll try to defeat you with him.